Welcome to the Pursuing Points Podcast, where it's all about the pursuit of credit card points and miles today so that you can travel the world free of charge tomorrow. And now, your host, Peter Foti. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third ever Pursuing Points Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Peter Foti. And today, I want to play a little game called What's in Your Wallet? Uh, It's not actually a game, but I am going to talk about the credit cards that I currently have in my quote unquote wallet. And I put quotes around that because on a daily basis, I have what's known as a a credit card uh, wallet phone case. So I've got my phone and I've got this case and it also doubles as my de facto wallet. So I don't actually carry like a, a, a proper wallet. I simply have this phone case, which has two credit cards, uh, my license, my insurance card, and what I refer to as my emergency 20. So at any given time, I've only ever got two credit cards on me, uh, even though today I'm going to talk about I've got 10 cards here. So I have a second uh, wallet, and inside of that has got all of these extra cards as well as things like gift cards and store brand cards, things like that, like loyalty cards, that sort of thing. But I don't actually ever do anything with those typically. Uh, typically that, that, that wallet stays in my backpack so that when I travel, I've got all of my cards available to me should I need them. But generally speaking, I really only focus on the two cards that I've got in my wallet case. But with all that being said, I am going to talk a little bit about uh, the cards that I've got, sort of why I have them, what my plans are. I um, mentioned in a recent blog post that I like to do like a credit card inventory every so often. And effectively, this is going to sort of act as that inventory. So I'm going to go through my wallet. I've got 10 cards here, like I said, and I'm basically going to decide, will I keep these Will I cancel them? And then for the ones that I'll definitely keep, sort of explain why. So to get started, the first card that I'm going to pull off the stack, and I've sort of got these ranked in terms of least valuable to most valuable. Obviously, it's 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 a pretty rough ranking. Uh, I it's it's not necessarily 100, percent but generally speaking, as we go on, the cards will get more and more important. Whereas the ones that we talk about first are the ones that are most likely to be canceled. So the first one I've got here is the City American Airlines Advantage Platinum Select. So originally I signed up for this card because it had a pretty significant sign-up bonus. At the time, I want to say it was something around 60,000 uh, American Airlines Advantage miles when you signed up and spent, say, 3,000 in the first couple months. So I've had it for almost two years now. And the reason I kept it past the expiration date the first time, or excuse me, past the annual fee due date the first time, is that this is one of those cards where I called uh, Citibank and I said, I don't really find a lot of value in the card anymore uh, as far as daily spending is concerned. My annual fee is coming up for renewal. Is there anything that you can do or offer me to sort of maintain my business? And this is something that I do all the time. So any card that I say I'm going to cancel on this show or at any time, you can pretty much be assured that even if it's a card with no annual fee, when I go to call to cancel, the first thing I'll ask is, do you have any kind of retention offer? Is there anything you can offer me that will help offset the cost of the annual fee so that I can keep this card in my wallet and and you guys can keep my business? So with this particular card, I actually did that last year. And the offer that they gave to me was, we will give you 1,000 additional Advantage miles every month in which you spend $1,000. So effectively, I was earning two points per dollar uh, for each dollar spent on this card for for every month that I spent the first two points per dollar on the first $1,000 every month for the last 12 months. Now, I haven't uh, really been taking advantage of this lately because... As I mentioned in the first podcast, I've got the uh, American Airlines Platinum credit card and sort of all my spending has been going on to that this year. And then as I mentioned in the last podcast, 
recently signed up for the Chase Sapphire Reserve, so I've got to hit a minimum spend on that. And so at this point, my spending is pretty much really, it's it's all kind of spoken for at this point. So this card doesn't really have much value to me. I don't fly an American very much. If I do, it's generally on an award ticket, which is generally in first class. So I don't really get any be- value uh, as far as this card and in, in the sense that even though it does offer, like, say, free check bags, those are typically things that I'm going to get for free anyway. So this card is is on the chopping block. The annual fee, I believe, is about $95. And as f- if I remember correctly, my annual fee comes up for renewal sometime this fall. Uh, I want to say it's around October. So soon I will call City and I will say, look, I don't necessarily find a ton of value in this card right now. I am considering canceling it. Is there anything you guys might be able to do to sort of uh, encourage me to stay, to, to retain my business? And sometimes they'll say yes. And like I said, they'll give you an offer. And other times they'll just say no, right? They'll say that, um, Unfortunately, we have no offers available for you. We've already given you a retention offer in the past, so you're not eligible, and that's fine. Uh, At that point, you just say, okay, no problem. I want to proceed with the cancellation. And of course, before you go ahead and cancel a card, be sure to check out the article that I posted uh, yesterday, which talks about when you should and should not cancel credit cards and sort of the steps to go through before you make that decision so that you are fully aware of the impact that it's going to have on your credit score. But with this card, it's it's relatively new. It's certainly one of the cards that's pulling down my average age. And my utilization is so low right now that even if I lose this credit limit, it's not really going to affect me that much. So I know that canceling it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I will call, see if they can offer me anything. If not, I will simply get rid of it. But that's the City Advantage Platinum Select. Next. So the next card is the Discover It. This is another one that I signed up for two years ago, back in November of 2014, because at that time it had a pretty significant cash sign-up bonus. Now, typically, I don't use points for cash back, and I typically don't sign up for cards that only offer cash back. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, Two of the cards in my stack here I signed up for simply because the sign-up bonus at the time was pretty significant. I don't. I do not remember exactly what this one was. I want to say that it was around two hundred and fifty dollars, or maybe even three hundred. And the minimum sounds relatively low, uh, and there's no annual fee. So this is a uh, the Discover is is a great credit card, especially if you're looking for things like cash back. Um, the customer service is great. I don't really have any problems with Discover. But I've not used this card since I met that uh, minimum spend requirement because the other thing is the bonus categories that Discover It offers are pretty much the same as the Chase Freedom, which I've also got, which we'll talk about. But so for me, this is one of those cards that I have in my wallet. It's about two years old, but it's it's still one of those where... I'm pretty sure that I'm going I'm going to call and and ask for a retention offer and then if nothing comes of it then I will cancel this. Um I don't expect to get a retention offer typically on cards that don't offer an annual fee. They don't really they they don't tend to offer those, but my plan is to cancel it. And in this case the reason I would I want to cancel it is simply because if I cancel it, I will be eligible for another sign-up bonus with Discover at some point in the future, right? So as long as I've got this card in my wallet, I can't sign up for another one. And so in canceling it, I'll open myself up to additional opportunities with Discover down the road. Um, So I'll be sure to write a post once I do make that call and go through the cancellation for both this and the previous card. But And then uh, I do plan on canceling them pretty soon. So that's the Discover it. Next is the uh, Bank of America Cash Rewards Card. This is probably the second dumbest credit card I ever signed up for. Um, I had recently moved. I was opening up a new bank account. The banker, as he was doing it, said, oh, you're you're pre-qualified for our Cash Rewards Card. Do you want to sign up? And for whatever reason, I said yes. I don't even think that this came with like a sign-up bonus. Uh yeah, 
honestly, it's not something I'm very proud of. It is what it is. I've got this card in my wallet. I believe it's maybe close to three years old at this point, probably even a little more, honestly. Um, but yeah, this card serves me no real purpose. Uh, most likely I'm going to look into canceling it. Obviously, like I said, the, the first two cards that I've just talked about, I plan on canceling. So I don't necessarily want to cancel all three of these, like just in a row, but I am going to consider canceling this card at some point in the future because I never use it. I probably shouldn't have signed up for it in the first place. And it just serves me no real purpose. Uh, it does not have an annual fee though. So technically there's no real hurry, but, um, but yeah, that's the bank of America, uh, cash rewards card. And, oh, it says card holder since 2013. So it's about three years old. So it's not, it's, it, it may be helping my credit score a little bit. Uh, my average age right now is a little over three years. So this is like kind of right in the middle, but I'll have to look into, and I'll, I'll have to look at my credit report and see exactly how old it is and see how that will affect my age. Um, and if it's pulling it up, I may keep it, but if it's right in the middle or pulling it down, then I'll probably get rid of it. Next, we've got the, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the Buffalo Bills. Okay, so this is the NFL Extra Points Barclay card. This is a cashback card that at the time that I signed up for it, it had a $400 uh, sign up bonus cash and no annual fee. I, I believe I signed up for this right around the Super Bowl three years ago. I think Barclays with this NFL card tends to do a big sign up bonus right around the Super Bowl. So that's when I would have signed up for it. Uh, at the time I had a very specific purchase in mind. I wanted to buy a new laptop. So that's why I got this card. I've not used it since I signed up for it and took advantage of that $400 bonus offer. But at this point it's still in my wallet and it honestly, it, it may end up being there for a while. Um, there is no annual fee. It is relatively old. I think it's helping out my credit report. But the one thing that I'll have to consider is very similar question to that of like to discover it, right? If I cancel this card, I open myself up to the possibility of being able to sign up for this exact same card again at some point in the future to take out to take advantage of an additional sign up bonus. But I'm not really sure. I like I said, so far, pretty much every car that I've talked about is on the chopping block. So, um, and because of the age of this one, I'll, I'll want to wait and see. I want to cancel some of those other ones first, see how it affects the credit score, and then, and then go from there. But uh, this is not a card that I use. It simply sits in this wallet, and um, unless they send me any kind of like special, you know, spend a thousand dollars and get fifty dollars cash back or something this month, I don't plan on using it anytime soon. Next. So we're getting into some better cards here, or at least cards that I can justify keeping. The next one we're going to talk about is the Amazon.com rewards card from Chase. So this is actually the uh, first actual like rewards card that I ever signed up for. So my, my first credit card I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, I got when I was like 18. And then this one, the Chase Amazon.com rewards card, I got... Uh, I believe when I was maybe 20 or something like that. I, I, I've had this card for some time. Uh, I shop on Amazon all the time. And so this card sort of made perfect sense for me. I don't remember what the sign-up bonus was. Uh, it was it was a while ago now. Um, I'm going to say it was maybe like something as cheap as like a $50 gift card. So certainly at that time, I was not as uh, aware of sort of what to look for in a sign-up bonus and I wasn't too discerning as far as like choosing particular cards. I just, I knew that I wanted a credit card with some rewards and uh, I shopped on Amazon all the time. So it made sense. At this point, I have this card in my wallet simply because it helps um, the age, the average age of my credit score. Um, this card is like five years old, maybe even six. And that is definitely on the upper, upper bound as far as, pulling up my average. So I don't plan on ever canceling this, this kind of a card, just given how much of an impact it has in my current credit score. Maybe someday I will, but for right now it has no annual fee. It's with Chase, which 
is probably my favorite bank as far as credit cards go. So I've got it. It offers three points per dollar on Amazon purchases, two points per dollar on, I believe, either dining or travel or maybe even both, and then one point on everything else. So effectively, you can earn 3% cash back uh, on Amazon. They don't. It does not earn ultimate rewards points. So these are just like, this is just, you know, 3% cash back on Amazon type deal. So I never use it because like I said, I mean, my spend these days goes towards cards that earn um, points or miles that I can use to travel with. Um, But every now and then uh, Amazon will do like some sort of promotion, like on like Black Friday or something like that, where if you have an Amazon.com card, you can get like an additional, say, $20 off. If something like that were to come about, I would certainly use the card um, in that case. But uh, other than that, it's just in my wallet to help with my credit score, and it's not something that I use uh, on a regular basis. Next is the Citizens Bank Platinum MasterCard. This is another one. This was I got this card right around the same time as the Chase Amazon.com Visa, and uh, at the time, this was probably one of my dumber credit card signups but looking back on it it actually helped me uh, quite a bit because it came with a pretty significant credit line i think this has like i don't know maybe six thousand dollars which when i got it and i was maybe 19 or 20 something like that that was pretty significant for me because my first credit card had such a little credit limit that this really um helped on my credit report and now these days i don't actually use the card but maybe once a year simply to just like keep it open and uh, it has no annual fee. It uh, it has no rewards to speak of that that I even know of. Honestly, maybe it does, but I haven't used it in so long that even if it did, I wouldn't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I have this card in my wallet. It helps pull up my credit score in terms of my average age, which if you're not familiar with like the average age and how your credit score is determined, I have a post on pursuingpoints.com that I can link in the show notes, but it basically goes into uh, breaking down how your credit score is, is, is determined. And one of the factors that they take into account is uh, your average age, which is essentially uh, the average number of months that all of your accounts have been open for. So in this case, this card is like five or four or five or six years old. It's, 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 it's definitely higher than my average. So it's, uh, it's pulling it up in that way. And because it's not a rewards card, there's no real incentive for me to I even consider canceling it because it's not something I would want to sign up for again. So I've got it. There's no annual fee. It helps with my credit score and I will probably have this card forever. And next. So this card, this is actually my first credit card ever. So even though I don't use it, this is the card that really started it all. And obviously I keep it in my wallet for more than just like nostalgia purposes. Uh, this is my oldest line of credit. So I got this, like I said, when I was around 18, actually my mother got it for me. And this is really what allowed me to start building credit at such a young age so that I was able to take advantage of, of some of the cards that we're going to talk about in a minute. So anyway, yeah, I mean, this, this, this card is, is a Clearview Federal Credit Union Visa card. I've had it, like I said, for going on eight years almost. Uh, the credit limit is it's either two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. I'm not even sure. I I use it once a year to buy like a cup of coffee, just so that I can uh, you know keep it open and make some use of it, pay a bill every now and then. But other than that, it stays in my my credit card wallet. I don't actually put any money on it, and I'll have this card literally forever simply because. Uh, it's my oldest line of credit, so it it helps. It's my sort of anchor for my credit score, and for that reason, there's just there's just no no incentive for me to ever even consider canceling this one. So the next card that we're going to talk about is the Chase Freedom Card. Uh, this card's pretty interesting. At it earns one point per dollar on all purchases, but then every quarter, it has a different set of bonus categories. And inside of those bonus categories, you earn five points per dollar up to $1,500 a quarter, which is effectively $75 in cash back. But what's great about this card and the real value in it is that if you've got a a Chase card that earns ultimate rewards points, which are things like the Sapphire Preferred, the Sapphire Reserve, the Inc. Plus, 
you can then transfer your Chase Freedom Points to your, one of your Ultimate Rewards cards. And then at that point, that's where they really get valuable, right? Because once you've got Ultimate Rewards Points, you can transfer them to partner airlines like Singapore Air or uh, hotel programs such as, say, Marriott. And you can also use those points inside of the Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal, which if you've got the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which again, we talked about in the last podcast, your points are effectively worth 50% more. So, you know, a thousand points, uh, a thousand Ultimate Rewards points with the Sapphire Reserve are effectively worth 1500 when you redeem through the Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal. So the freedom, unfortunately, I haven't been able to make use of it super often, given the uh, the the spending requirements that I'm trying to hit with the Platinum Amex right now. And then in the last podcast, of course, I signed up for the Sapphire Reserve, which means I've got to meet that spending requirement as well. So the freedom hasn't really made it into my spending uh, almost at all this year, honestly. But it's part of my quote unquote arsenal and it's a big part of my overall strategy. In the future, I'm going to do uh, several podcasts and articles about you know that strategy and sort of uh, maximizing your daily expenditures so that you know you you can earn all of the points that you deserve based on where you're spending all your money. So the the freedom is definitely a part of that equation for me. It's just that right now, Given some of the things that I'm trying to do, it just doesn't make uh, economic sense for me to put spend on anything other than the Amex Platinum or now the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So I've got the freedom. I won't be canceling it anytime soon, but uh, but I'm not necessarily using it on a daily basis. All right, so we've got three cards left. First is... The Chase Sapphire Preferred. So before the last podcast, if I had recorded this episode, the Chase Sapphire Preferred would have been uh, one of, if not the best, like travel uh, credit card that I had in my wallet. Uh, the Sapphire Preferred earns ultimate rewards points. So as I just mentioned, this is one of those cards where if you're earning points on the Freedom, you can then transfer it to the Sapphire Preferred, at which point you can transfer it to airline and hotel partners or use it in the ultimate rewards portal. Etc. Uh, the card earns two points per dollar on dining and travel. So if you spend you know a fair amount of money on either of those things, you're going to be able to double your 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 points accrual. And it does have an annual fee of ninety five dollars. But this is uh, so. I mean, I mentioned before that I got the Chase Amazon card, which was sort of my first rewards card. But my first real travel rewards card was actually the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which I signed up for probably six months after I got the Chase Amazon Visa. And, you know, this is what this is what got me really excited about points and miles and travel is like, you know, the, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, every, every time you hand it to somebody, or at least back in the day when I first got it, when you used to hand it to people, they'd be like, wow, what is this? You know, it's made out of metal. It's just, it's very cool. Very cool looking, and it feels it's pretty heavy. Um, so there, there was a time where the Sapphire Preferred was sort of my daily driver, and it's where I spent all my money. These days, it's a little bit different, and especially now with the Sapphire Reserve, I mean, my overall strategy is going to be changing quite a bit. Uh, one of the things that I've considered, and I'll be talking about this on future shows, but one of the things that I've considered doing is is downgrading from the Sapphire Preferred to the Freedom Unlimited, um, and I'll talk about why in a future episode. But basically, at this point, everything that the Preferred offers, the Reserve offers, and then plus a little bit more. So for as long as I've got the Reserve, it doesn't really make sense for me to have the Preferred as well. But for right now, it's in my wallet. I think the annual fee is coming up pretty soon. So my strategy with this card is basically when the annual fee nears renewal, I will call and I will first say, you know, do you have any sort of retention offer if I were to consider canceling the card? I don't expect them to say yes, just sort of given um, how many reserve cards they've recently sent out. And I mean, we'll see. Obviously, everything's a case by case basis, but um, if they do not offer me any sort of retention offer, I will probably look to downgrade to the Freedom Unlimited at that time. 
which will mean that I won't get a Freedom Unlimited sign-up bonus. But at that point, I'll sort of have like the golden trio of chase cards that earn ultimate rewards points. And I'll talk about why that is in a future show. But um, that's probably what I'm looking to do with this card moving forward. All right, we're down to the last two here. So the first one that I want to talk about is the American Express Delta Platinum Sky Miles card. So this card I actually talked about quite a bit in the very first episode. And the reason why is that it's been a huge part of me earning uh, Delta Gold medallion status this year because it comes with several spending gates. And once you meet the, the requirements for those gates, you actually earn MQMs. And I actually got some feedback about the first episode in terms of uh, explaining MQMs and MQS and MQDs and all the different stuff that goes into Delta status. So my plan is to either write a post or do a podcast or maybe even both about uh, Delta status and how everything works together and what all those acronyms mean and things like that, because it is kind of confusing, honestly. But anyway, uh, the Platinum... Sky Miles card from American Express. When you spend twenty five thousand dollars in a year, you earn ten thousand MQMs. And just for as a reference point, to earn say silver status on Delta, which is the lowest tier, you'd need twenty five thousand. And typically, an MQM can only be earned by flying on an aircraft, by flying on a Delta aircraft. So they're they're generally pretty hard to come by. They're typically reserved for only people that fly a fair amount. But if you have this card, you can then earn MQMs without actually having to fly. So I'm working towards the second spending requirement now. And if I meet that, in addition to some of my other travel for the rest of the year, I expect to meet uh, the requirements for Delta Platinum status, which I am sure I will do an episode on at that time. But for now, just know that essentially essentially all of my uh, spending this year has been on the on, on this Platinum Amex, even though, you know, I've, I've sort of, uh, neglected spending money on cards like the freedom or the Sapphire preferred, even if it would have earned me bonus points simply because to me, earning that status was so much more important than those redeemable points that it made sense to sort of forego that those, those bonus points in exchange for the, uh, the potential status that I would ultimately earn. Um, Obviously, I'm going to be shifting gears a little bit because as I'm going to talk about the next card, I do have to spend some money on this new Chase Sapphire Reserve, but uh, I believe I'm I'm only a few thousand dollars away from meeting the second uh, spending requirement for the Platinum Amex, so hopefully we can hit that as well as the minimum spend requirements for the Sapphire Reserve before the end of the year, and we will have our status and some points to go along with it. So I didn't talk about all of the benefits of the Platinum Amex, the the, the Delta Sky Mouse Platinum Amex. Um, I, I can link to it in the show notes. Basically, you know, it offers $29 lounge access. It offers free check bags. Um, what else? But, you know, really it's the, the main value of the card is the fact that it earns MQMs after you spend that, that required amount of money. And that's really why I have it. So lastly here, we're at 29 minutes, but lastly is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about this because if you go back to episode two where Michael and I, we talked at length about the Sapphire Reserve, the benefits that it offers, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you'll, you'll know exactly why I signed up for it. And, and honestly, if, if you're following the, I guess, quote unquote, credit card world at all, or have been at all for the last month. Certainly, you've heard about the Sapphire Reserve, right? It's Chase's new product. It offers three points per dollar on dining and travel. It's got a $300 a year travel credit. Um, it's got a $450 annual fee. And right now, if you sign up, it's got a 100,000 ultimate reward point sign up bonus when you spend uh, $4,000 within the first three months. So if you travel with any kind of regularity, um, or if, if you value those types of points, which I would hope that you do, uh, the card is kind of a no-brainer, at least for the first year, considering uh, the, the sign-up bonus is, is, is valued at a minimum of $1,500 when you redeem those points for travel through the Ultimate Rewards Portal. Um, and then, of course, that value could go up even higher if you decide to transfer those to 
either hotel or airline programs and sort of find your own redemption. So that's the last card. That is So in my credit card wallet um, that I talked about earlier, my wallet phone case, I've got the Reserve and the Delta Platinum Amex. Those are the only two, the only two cards that I'm carrying right now. And all of my spend will go on them essentially for the rest of the year. So that is my wallet. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions for me, uh, please feel free to reach out on Twitter or in the comments, or you can contact privately on the website. Um, we'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about what's in your wallet and how we can uh, maximize your spend and, and your travel and you know have some fun. So thank you for listening. Uh, be sure to tune in. I believe on Monday I'm going to be interviewing one of the co-founders of 30k.com. So if you've not yet uh, checked that website out, be sure to check it out and then uh, join me on Monday for an interview with the co-founder. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.